Since man first flew, the principles of flight have not changed. What follows is a simple explanation of those principles. Let's look first at the environment in which we fly. All flight depends upon the properties that exist within the atmosphere. But what is the atmosphere? It is that small part of our universe that surrounds the surface of the Earth with a layer of air. Flight, as we know it, is only possible within that small portion of the universe. The lift of the aeroplane, its controls and stability, as well as its engines, whether piston or turbine, depend on the air and the forces it generates. As far as flight is concerned, the most important property within the atmosphere is density, or thickness of the air, and the fact that it decreases with height. How much does air weigh? Well, at 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, most people would find it hard to lift the weight of air in the average sized room. But to complicate matters, the weight of the air changes with altitude. At sea level, 3 cubic meters of air will weigh 3.85 kilograms, but weigh only 1.8 kilograms at 20,000 feet and less than 0.45 kilograms at 60,000 feet. Obviously, pressure also decreases with height, which is the reason for the decrease in density, the air close to the Earth's surface being compressed by the weight of all the air above it. Just as the pressure and density decrease with height, so also does the temperature, and at a regular rate, about 2 to 3 degrees centigrade per thousand feet, right up to 36,000 feet, beyond which it stays relatively constant at minus 57 degrees centigrade. Perhaps the most annoying feature of our atmosphere is its changeability, forcing us to use what is known as the International Standard Atmosphere, which gives us a standard from which to measure the performance of an aeroplane. Having briefly covered the atmosphere, let's now look at what actually makes an aeroplane fly. For an aeroplane to fly, we have to provide it with a lifting force, and one that is at least equal to its weight. The force that lifts an aeroplane into the air and keeps it airborne comes through its wings, which are curved shape, particularly over the top. This shape is known as an aerofoil. Lift is the result of a number of effects, but without becoming too scientific, we might say that as air flows over a curved surface, in this case the wing, it will change direction and accelerate. A reaction force opposes the direction in which the air has been accelerated. The component of this acceleration that acts at right angles to the incoming reaction force is lift. The wing is tilted at a small angle, which is known as the angle of incidence. The air passing underneath the wing pushes up against the underside of the wing as it is deflected downwards. In effect, what is happening is that we are decreasing the pressure over the wing's top surface and increasing it underneath. It is the wings of the aeroplane which support the aeroplane in the air and prevent its weight from making it fall to the ground. Increase the size of the wing and you increase the amount of lift. Obviously, in order to maintain lift, we must constantly push the wing forward and this is achieved by providing thrust, which may come from a propeller-driven engine or a jet.